compost and lot of other things doing green manure and it's become like cotton and even further it's become like butter it's become like butter it's so smooth and so easy to cultivate i asked him how come there are so many birds he, he said there, there's such a big population of earthworms now and they when as i cultivate as i cultivate they come and eat the earthworm they eat the insects and all that From the beginning of time, we've recognized the influence of heavenly bodies on plants, weather, and the tides. Using an astronomical planting and sowing calendar, biodynamics is a rediscovery of those ancient rhythms. caterpillar, green caterpillar is eating these pots and it has gone down at the moment and they'll come up in the morning all night they'll be trying to eat it in the morning the birds will come and eat it this is what it does and we can have the insects tomorrow I think maybe I'll try to open it if I have if we do some uh, herbal sprays we can control it to a large extent but I feel the birds will do the job I'll then do it for a couple of days and finish it off. Natural farmers work with nature as a whole to understand that insect, plant, and soil are intimately connected. Healthy soil makes healthy plants, makes healthy people. Good biodynamic pest control includes companion planting, natural insecticides, liquid manures, and quartz preparation. The corporate model requires a farmer to grow food to meet market demands. But Sarvdaman follows the biodynamic model, feeding his family and workers first. Sarvdaman then sells or trades his surplus to his local community through a roadside store. Some surplus is sold in local towns. But his store is so successful that it takes almost all his produce. Why don't we do it tomorrow? His farm operates on a human scale, self-sustaining, ethical, and biologically diverse. Sarvdaman's farm represents India's localized economies. It is a blueprint for a future when fossil fuels are scarce when the world's most valuable commodity will be the knowledge of how to farm and the wisdom of how to grow food that is more than just stuff to fill our stomachs. But even on this perfect farm, the reality of the corporate agenda that underpins chemical farming is a breath away. Whatever the politics, Peter is resolute in his commitment to be the change he wants to see. You've got to get your hands dirty, you've got to get your feet tired, and work it. His dream is a world returned to a matrix of interlocking small farms, each supplying and caring for a widening circle of community. And you have this wonderful food at the end of, end of China, and that's the amazing thing. Yeah. On this journey, the invitation of Anil Bokar, a government-employed technical officer in Maharashtra, Peter visits 10 farms a day. His schedule would be punishing for a man half his age. But Peter is unflagging in his enthusiasm and his commitment. I worked in agriculture in the city, associated with those scientists, brought a green revolution with the invasion of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. As a matter of fact, the farmers 
but higher yields. But there was a deterioration in the ecology. Not only that, but the soil and the cost of production went very high, which led to the uh, not satisfaction to the farmers. And they were away, they were fed up with the farming. And we happened to meet with uh, many okay. farmers and we start off thinking other way. And the other way, that is organic farming. Peter's legacy is spread across India. Wherever he goes, newly minted biodynamic farmers are eager for his knowledge and blessing. That helps the culture, you know. When I first came here, people said, oh, this man's crazy. You don't believe what that man prophesies, do you? It was, it was the reports I get. But now that's changing, and we're having a lot of help now from the government. Here we have formed the agri uh, organic farmers group in each and every village, and we have federated them into a federation at the district level. So in this way, this organization setup is from the village level to the district level. And the farmers come here, sit there, and solve their own problems and share their own experiences. His neighbor was growing horseback chemically. This man was growing during his horseback. And farmers are now also knowing what are the benefits regarding uh, the ecosystem balance and all that. So this has taken a lot of efforts. And now it is spreading very fast in this region. We had, we had two, three young men came up and said, excuse me, sir, we haven't met you, but we wanted to meet you. We are working in Maharashtra. And you know, sir, we have made, this year, our farmers made 10,000 biodynamic compost heaps. I said, what? 10,000 biodynamic compost heaps? They said, yes, sir. In Maharashtra, there are over 1,000 officially supported organic heavy, and biodynamic training programs, with more than 4 million hectares now, under organic farming. Anil Bokar reports that typically, farmers move from chemical farming to organic farming and then on to biodynamic agriculture. The only thing I would do would be to try and somehow moisten the green. Very, very good. Oh. Uh, hang on, just to have. I, I'd actually make another, put another layer of dry, of, of dry on, dry, then, yeah. dry your sorry, yeah. then this one. Just look at the way the, the water is spread from the, the wrist down on the hand. I mean, there's a real love in that, you know. That's good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> oh, this is so nice to see this. So nice to see Very nice. Oh. It was very slow beginning. Very slow. And if it accelerates at this speed in the next 10 years, I would say, conservatively, almost the whole of India could be more biodynamic. The farmers, now they are reducing this input cost, and now our farmers, from chemical farming, they went to organic farming, and from organic farming, they are heading towards biodynamic agriculture. I mean, you talk, tell people about it, and I tell you about it, you tell your friends, and they tell their friends, and they tell their friends, and tsh -tsh -tsh, go some miles. And this is quite exciting. Thousands of farmers throughout India are turning to biodynamics. It is calculated there are more than 200,000 biodynamic compost heaps in India. Yeah. Viewed holistically, the Green Revolution was a failure. Chemical agriculture destroyed India's natural abundance, farming communities, and soil. High-yielding plant varieties turned out to use far more water, growing significantly less crop per drop. Today, in much of India, the rivers have long since dried up, and the only water is hundreds of meters down. Chemical? Chemical, uh, urea. Ha, urea. Yeah, yeah. Urea, fertilizer. Aha, uh -huh. fertilizer. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, heavy, heavy doses. Heavy doses. Heavy doses giving them. Heavy doses. Mm. Kills all the humans. Yeah.